What's good guys, today I want to talk to you about photography POVs and more specifically how I film them and the process behind it. These kind of videos are pretty popular here on YouTube and if you're looking at starting a channel around photography, making a few of these can be a pretty good place to start. What I like about this kind of format of video and I'm sure a lot of other people like as well is it allows you to see how other photographers work and see the world and I think it's the most practical and hands-on way of learning photography without actually going out and doing it for yourself. And I like to think that these kind of videos can spark ideas, provide inspiration and hopefully encourage fellow photographers to pick up their camera and get out creating. So in this guide I want to break down how I shoot a photography POV video so you can go out and do the same. But before we get started make sure you are subscribed to the channel and you turn on the bell icon so you notified for whenever I release a new video. It'd be great to have you a part of this ever so growing community and your support is always deeply appreciated. That all being said the first thing we should have a look at is the three essentials that you need to start filming a POV. The first one seems a bit obvious but it is the camera itself. Now the brilliant thing with these kind of videos it can be anything you want it could be a film camera it could be a dslr it could be a simple point and shoot a mirrorless camera it could even just be your phone it could be absolutely anything that you have readily available to yourself and that's the brilliant part about all this you don't need the most expensive kind of gear to get started next we're going to need a point of view camera such as a gopro or so it's similar what we're looking for here is something that is stabilized got good audio, easy to use and a wide angle. You want to try and get a wide angled lens because you want it to be able to show the environment that you're shooting in as well as clearly showing you using the camera. GoPros are a popular choice for this and my go-to is GoPro. I recently just picked up the uh, GoPro Hero 11 which I actually haven't had time to go out and shoot with yet but before this I was rocking the GoPro Hero 8 which is what I'd recommend most people going for if you're looking at just starting out. And there's a few good reasons for this. It has really good stabilization, which is going to result in buttery smooth footage for your POVs. And if I remember correctly, it was the first GoPro not to require any housing to mount it to stuff. So the internal mics do a great job at picking up sound. For those wondering, I don't use an external mic to pick up sound for my POVs. All the audio comes from the GoPros themselves. And what helps is it being mounted on my chest. So it's not too far away from my gob. So it can easily pick up what I'm saying and always deliver crisp sound. In terms of how I set up my GoPro to film my POVs, I've got the resolution at 4K 30fps. The lens is set to wide or super view. Hypersmooth is on default setting, which is just the on. Duration is set to no limit, which seems to be a new feature added to the GoPro Hero 11. Going down to Pro Tunes, 10 bit I've turned on. My bit rate is set to high. Shutter is on auto. I never use ND filters when shooting my POVs. ISO is set to 100 at a minimum, and ISO maximum changes. It depends if I'm shooting in the day or shooting at night. In the day, it's set to a maximum of 800. At night, it's either 3200 or 6400. And finally, my colors are set to flat. The next thing we want to have a look at is SD cards. Now, personally, I'd recommend a minimum of 128 gigs. If you're planning on shooting in these higher resolutions and for longer period of time, this should be plenty. Personally, I use a 256 gig V30 card, which I use with the GoPro Hero 8, and now I'm using with the GoPro Hero 11. And honestly, in most situations, this is overkill. Even when I was in New York City shooting for hours in a day, I never run out of storage on it. I'll leave some links in the description below to the micro SD cards that I recommend, along with everything else I'm mentioning today. They are Amazon affiliate links, so if you do buy through those links, it costs you nothing extra, but I do get a little bit of commission from that, a little bit of kickback, which just supports me and helps out the channel. When shooting a POV, one battery is never enough, so I would recommend picking up some extra batteries. But if you're interested in what method I use, I actually plug my GoPro into a power bank. This means I don't have the constant faff of needing to change batteries and means I can focus more on taking the photographs and never missing a shot. The third and final thing you're going to need to film a POV video is a chest mount for the POV camera to sit on. The chest mount that I'm using is the GoPro official one, but to be fair, there is another one that you can get which is much more budget friendly and does the exact same job for less. So once we've got the three essentials, we're nearly ready to start filming. But just before that, I'd like to share with you some of the things I've picked up on and learned about shooting POVs that I think could be quite helpful.
First off, when we're shooting a POV, we want to avoid using the viewfinder and instead use the rear LCD screen. We want the viewer to have the best experience possible when watching our content, so by utilising the rear LCD screen, the viewer can see what kind of camera settings we're using and how we're framing up our shot. It might be a little bit awkward at first, but you want to make sure that you're holding your camera a little bit further out and you want to adjust your POV camera accordingly to ensure that the viewer can clearly see your camera in frame. An important aspect of making a POV video is having a route planned. Even when I'm shooting randomly, I still have a rough idea of where I want to end up being and what kind of shots I want to achieve. However, if I am going somewhere new, I will conduct research beforehand to fully understand where I want to be and what kind of shots I want to get. So for example, when I went to New York City, I did a ton of research before. I got together all the places I wanted to visit, all the zip codes, and then I was able to plan a route across accordingly to allow me to hit all of these spots when I was going out and shooting my POVs. This also allowed me to use the time I had in New York more efficiently. And speaking of time, as a little side note, when you're out shooting a POV, don't ever feel rushed. Take your time with it. If you want to fish at a location for 30 minutes to get that one perfect shot, do it because the brilliant thing with POV is, is you can always cut out the excess. That time that you were waiting, you could just cut that out when you're editing. I have been guilty of this in the past of trying to hit as many locations in a city as possible and I think sometimes it can actually have a negative impact on the quality of shots you get because you're just too busy trying to hit all of these locations and not focusing on trying to get those really good shots. You're not looking creatively, you're just thinking what's going to be engaging, what of audience is going to enjoy but I'm trying to change that because I'd prefer to get five really good shots than 50 okay ones. When you're out shooting a POV video, you want to talk to the audience, you want to be engaging with them, you want to explain to them what's happening, provide an insight into your creative process. So you might want to talk about what kind of subjects you're looking for, what kind of lighting you're hoping for, why you're taking a photo of this specific subject and why is that interesting. And sometimes don't forget to mention what camera settings you're using and why. This style of providing a constant narrative stream through the creative process allows the audience to fully understand why you are taking a particular photograph. Adding to that, this approach can provide the viewer with ideas that they might want to go out and try when they're next out shooting. So be creative with it, try new things. And if it doesn't work out, you can always cut that bit out with the final edit. If you're able to go out and start hitting these markers, you're well on your way to making a great POV video. When shooting a POV video, you want to be informative, engaging and yourself, but this one can be a hard one to crack. Despite knowing full well that you're talking to a camera and to the audience, it can be super uncomfortable and weird essentially speaking out loud to yourself in public. I completely get the feeling. Don't ever watch my very first POV videos because that will give you some sense of the idea of how uncomfortable I was shooting these kind of videos. And even though I've been shooting them for years now, there are still times where I find it a little bit awkward. But how I learned to get more comfortable speaking to myself in public while shooting these POVs, and I know it's lame, but it is just through practice. Putting myself in these situations where I was asking people if I could take the photograph and then just trying to commentate everywhere I could. It built up a resilience against it and it made me realise that people honestly don't really care that you're taking photographs or talking to yourself in public. Granted, you are going to get people looking at you. Some people might think to themselves, hmm, that was a little bit weird. But as soon as they fought it, they've probably gone around the corner, forgotten about it and got on with their day. It's a very fleeting, awkward moment. And soon you won't even care about it. It'll be like water off a duck's back. Some people might be worried about confrontation and people getting aggressive towards them after you've just taken their photograph. But in my experience, I have never had anybody get aggressive or irate towards me about taking their photograph. Don't get me wrong, I have had people in the past come up to me asking why have I taken their photograph, what am I taking the photo of, and in these situations I just, I'm polite, I'm courteous, I'm approachable, and I say to them, I'm a street photographer, this is what I do, this is what I've just taken a photo of, and if I have taken a photo of them, I offer to send it to them, and usually that solves it all. Now there are going to be moments when you're filming POVs or you're taking photos of someone in general, and they're going to notice you taking their photograph, and in that moment, when they look at you through the lens, and you're looking at at them through the viewfinder it feels like they're looking straight deep into your soul and it can be really tempting to quickly just bring the camera down turn around and pretend like none of it happened 
don't do that. Instead, try and embrace it because there is one method that I use which works quite a lot of the time when someone notices me taking their photograph. I smile because a lot of people's natural reaction to seeing someone smiling at them is to smile back and then that interaction goes from being a little bit awkward to friendly and then you can get a photo of someone smiling and then some people might even throw a pose or something like that because everyone's feeling at ease in that situation. Getting back onto talking out loud in public, I have got another two methods for you that you might want to try out. The first one is to go out of a group of mates and do photography together. For one, this can be safer, especially at night and if you're new to the game. And two, being around mates is more comfortable. You're around your mates, you feel more at ease and you don't put the pressure on yourself. Because I find a lot of people when trying to speak to a camera or something, when they're on their own, they put pressure upon themselves to try and perform and it just never works. So being around a group of mates, other people who can relate to what you're doing, other people who know what you're doing, can just put you in a lot better headspace and make things a lot easier. The final method I can recommend, and this is the one I use quite regularly, and that is putting some headphones in and listening to some music. I actually have a photography walk playlist, which is always good to put me into a good headspace for a photo sesh. In addition, having headphones in can make it far less awkward to talk to yourself in public because from an outside perspective when you see someone who's got headphones in you naturally think when they're talking out loud they're talking on the phone so it makes the whole experience of doing a POV video and talking out loud far less uncomfortable. So that is how I film a photography POV video. I think I've covered everything, but if you've got any further questions or if you've got any other strategies that you use when you're out doing street photography, let me know in the comment section below. But I think the last thing we should do today is have a look through the hashtag CV photos and see what you guys have been creating. Let's get started. And our first photograph today is gonna be by the BrunoUSA.view. This is pretty perfect timing. You've got the two trams here, you've got a train in the background. What a cool bridge that is. And the beautiful city in the background of Portugal. Definitely want to visit there in the future. I want to go to Lisbon. Oh, look at that sunset by Darren. Whoa, that is spectacular. What a beautiful sunset that is. I love it. We've got a Lamborghini here. This is pretty cool by Red Hawk Captures. Nice angles. You can never go wrong with a Lambo. How many Lambos are in that place, man? You've got three right there. Dang, you should have got all three of them lined up. That would have been sick. We'll have a look at three more shots today. We'll start with this one by Abdu570 from the Netherlands. I really like this shot because the guy in the uh, jacket here really stands out against the very muted tones in the background. Have we got some more rallying shots? Who's these ones by? Pete Weidman Photos. Dude, these are sick. Oh, jeez. I really want to do some more rallying. Oh, that one with the foregrounds, dude. Damn. And that panning one with the foreground as well. That, that is good. These shots are absolutely spectacular. Love it. All right. The last one we're going to have a look at today is ooh, this one by Cotas uh, from Lisbon, Portugal. Look at that silhouette, man. Oh, that is cinematic. Oh, wow. These are... These are all really good. These are beautiful shots. Yeah, Lisbon is definitely on my list. All right, guys. So that is where I am going to be leaving today's video. If you did like it, hit the like button, subscribe, turn on the bell icon to notify whenever I release a new video. But I am going to let you get on with the rest of your day. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. But until next time, create, explore, and inspire. And I'll see you in the next one. Laters.